Good evening everybody, my name is Michelle and it is time for our Love is a Balance Sheet online Facebook Live session and we are going to share about the two aspects that most of us finds very very challenging in our lives and that is love and money. So we are going to look at love from a perspective that can perhaps simplify it for us as to how can we really see how love changes things for us and how can we really see how good it feels to love yourself instead of feeling guilty um, and instead of feeling selfish. So welcome everybody to the Love is a Balance Sheet online workshop and just say hello and please remember that as we go on you are welcome to post your questions and post your comments and we're just gonna have a loveful time together. Hello Michelle, hi Susan, nice to see you. Hi Lorraine, yes it's lovely. So tell us where you're from and let us connect in the vibration of love. For those who haven't met me yet, my name is Michelle from michellefuch.com and I teach spiritual guidance and connecting with your angels and your guides working in the areas of the principles of unconditional love and abundance. So welcome, please join in, give us your comments and we're going to have just a loveful time. You know, when we talk about self-love, very often I receive the question, how do I love myself? How do I move from all the years of neglecting myself? It's so difficult to just jump into feeling worthy or feeling that I can deserve it and that I'm worthy of it and that I can receive um, without giving back. And it feels like it's this constant battle of giving and receiving. It's hard to say no when it comes to myself. It's hard to say yes when it comes to myself. So that is what we will be addressing in the Love Balance Sheet. And the Love Balance Sheet is a tool that's easily understandable to make love less fearful, to make that feeling of vulnerability a little bit less scary. If we equate it to something like a balance sheet, which we all know and work with every month in our lives, perhaps we can receive the concepts a little bit better. Why would one equate love to money or even maybe think that love is a currency? Hi, Christelle. Thank you for joining in. Because isn't love and money supposed to be opposing forces? Yes? Sometimes we think we have to choose between love and money. So either we choose love because money is bad or we choose money because we think the two don't go together. But let me ask you this question. So how do you feel when there is a lack of income? How do you feel when there is a lack of money in your life? How do you feel when you're in overdraft? You, you do feel, um, you, you almost feel worthless, isn't it? And you feel worried and you feel anxious and, and you feel that you cannot provide. So it's more about the feeling of the lack of that energy in our lives that causes the, the vibration or that causes the flow to stop or start. So how do you feel when you don't have love in your life? You feel lonely, you feel unworthy, you feel that there is no one you can feel love to. So in a way, th that those that we thought of as opposing forces actually bring about the same feeling, yes? If you've got no money, money in your bank account, you're going to feel anxious. Yes, Christelle, you're going to feel destitute. 
But if you don't have love in your very own love bank, you're going to feel pretty much the same. When you have money and there's flow and you can give and receive and you can buy what you love and you can help others, you feel good and you feel inspired. In the same way, when we have love, when we love others and when we give, we feel good. We feel good about ourselves. It feels so good to give, doesn't it? So it's actually not about the actual money or love, but it is about the flow of giving and receiving. The flow of loving someone and the flow of receiving love back. It's the flow between giving and receiving love, giving and receiving money. Let me ask you this question. How do you feel when you are in overdraft? How do you feel when you're in overdraft? Maybe you feel anxious. It's on your mind all the time and you can't sleep and you feel tired and you feel exhausted because it's on your mind all the time. So how do you feel when you give, give, give to the point of exhaustion? How do you feel when you love and give so much and you get nothing in return that later on you just feel you cannot anymore? It's the same as an overdraft, isn't it? Because the balance of giving and receiving is not intact. Hi, Cynthia. Lovely to see you. Love and light to everybody. Thank you. So it is about the flow of giving and receiving. And if we have limiting beliefs about money that we so often hear about in the teachings of abundance is to clear those limiting beliefs in the same way there's limiting beliefs about love in our lives. And it's not maybe because we haven't tried our best to give it. It's maybe because we've never learned to feel worthy in the first place. How worthy are you feeling of receiving love? How worthy are, of you, are you feel of receiving kindness? When someone gives you a gift, when someone is kind to you, how do you feel? So in the same way, how do you feel about receiving money? Well, how do you feel when someone, you go, you go on a lunch and someone offers to pay and the first thing you do is you go, oh no, thank you, you don't have to. Because somehow we feel we're not worthy of receiving abundance. And when we refer to abundance, it's abundance of life, it's abundance of joy, it's abundance of happiness. It is so that we can have the flow of giving and receiving in abundance because I cannot give away what I don't have. So if my love bank is not filled up, I cannot give it to others. And that is so often what we try and do is we give, give, give because we feel too bad to receive and then we go into overdraft. So the love balance sheet is a guideline, perhaps maybe a toolkit that can help us to just start opening up to self-love, to just see unconditional love as not something that I have to fear so much and and not resist it because I don't feel vulnerable. But maybe start working with it in a more practical way. Because if I can maybe start bringing in practical um, exercises or practical stuff that I can do every day, I can get used to this love thing. You know, unconditional love is about unconditionally giving love and have that compassion and divine understanding for myself, for those around me, for life. How in love with you, how in love are you with life? How in love are you with receiving? How in love are you with giving? How in love are you with your mistakes? You see, when we start thinking about it in that way, then we can see how love starts 
changing situations around and and perhaps this can be the first step in your journey towards unconditional love it's moving towards allowing the flow of love to be able to being loved completely and unconditionally yourself first and then in turn, you can love others in the same way. You know when your love bank is full, when your heart is so filled with love and compassion and understanding, do you know that you hardly ever have to think how to give it away? Because it's like a damn wall. It will fill up and it will fill up and it will fill up and it will fill up. And it, that damn wall will just burst. And then that love just flows out into the world, into others. So it seems easy, doesn't it? So let's compare love to a love balance sheet and look at how we can start working with this beautiful divine energy of unconditional love in our lives because we can be in love with life. Yes, we can have beautiful, love-filled relationships, whether it's with family, with friends, with yourself, or for, with a partner. It includes also that what you do. Yes, doing what you love is part of filling up our love bank. So we're going to go into that now. And for a first step, the most important thing is to Start where you are, as you are. Don't wait to love yourself. Don't wait to give to yourself. Don't wait until, oh, once I've worked on that, X, Y, Z, then I'll be worthy of love. Or once I've managed to overcome that fear, or once I've managed to overcome that limiting belief, once I've lost weight, once my hair looks like this, once something is different, then I'll be okay. The point is, is that love can actually help you to love you where you are, how you are now. So let us start with looking at the love balance sheet. Please give us your questions Please give us your comments, join in in the conversation. If I do miss a comment, I will scroll for it later and get back to you and we can start this conversation on the love balance sheet. Hi Kenneth, thank you for joining in. So please participate. So what is an essential part of our lives? What is a an essential part of if we think of love as a currency, it's income, yes? You need an income. You need money in the bank in order to give money out. So if we look at income, these are the things that you fill up your love bank with. And income in love can be thoughts and acts of self-love. It can be the decisions you make that increases your self-worth. What decisions are you making that maybe says, you know, I'm worthy of a choice here. I am worthy to make this decision. Or I've made this decision and I feel pretty good about it. So any kind thought that you have towards yourself, any act of self-love that you give yourself, that fills up your love bank. It's anything that which you extend from your heart to yourself. Who here has bought a gift that said, from me to me? <laughs> yes, have you ever done that? From me to me, yes? Um, perhaps maybe you take a day off and you pamper yourself. Perhaps maybe you buy yourself something pretty or you have a joy appointment or you have a love appointment and you think to yourself, that was good to do that. I've honored myself here. So it's those things that you do for yourself that you do that brings you love, that gives you joy. A very important part of income in our love lives is the choices you've made that served you. It's also those moments where you have respected yourself or stood up for yourself 
Yes, how does that feel? It makes you feel good. So the more you do these things, the thoughts, the actions, the more you'll feel better and better about yourself and the stronger and the stronger you feel. So you're filling up your love bank. How often have you been in a conversation with someone and you said, you know, it was so difficult to do that, but I feel so proud of myself that I did it. And it was difficult, but it feels good. So you're filling up your love bank. That is your income. Allowing yourself to do what you love fills up your love bank. It is your income. And when you fill up your love bank, you fill up so that ultimately you can give it away. Because what happens after a while, you'll tell someone else, you know that time that I stood up for myself? You know, it feels so good. You have to try that too. So you give it away. Yes. When you've experienced self-love, when you experienced how good it feels to honor yourself and to respect yourself and to feel worthy, it will just flow from you to others. Yes. What the heart is full of, <laughs> the mouth speaks. Isn't that so? So initially, make joy appointments for yourself. Create appointments in your diary and call them love appointments. And at that time, do an act of self-love. Do an act of joy. And all those decisions that you put off, all those discussions that you want to have, all the words that you want to speak but you don't speak it, remember Choices you have made that served you, where you have respected or stood up for yourself, you fill up your love bank. So that is, that is the income part of the love balance sheet. So we know that a balance sheet has got income, it's got expenses, it's got cash flow. And in the finances, um, you also have to look at your return on investment. So when you make decisions in terms of huge amounts of money to spend, then you will also have a look at, well, what is the return on investment? Yes. <laughs> we spend a lot of time making sure that our financials are sound. But do you spend time in making sure that your love financials are sound? And, and when last did you do a love balance sheet and say, hmm, let me just look a bit at my income and just let me look at have I been giving more than I receiving and how can I, how can I fix the income and, and what does my return on investment look? When last did I, did I spend money? When last did I spend time on myself, investing in myself? So it's all part of the love balance sheet that we're going into now. Yes, Michelle, we have to do it more often because, you know, um, when you think negative of money, you're going to get the negative outcome. Yes. So the more negative you are about money, the more in fear you are about money, the more you think about the lack thereof, the more there is lack. And the more it will battle to flow because there is a resistance because you don't really like it. Um, and money's not going to flow where it's not really welcome. Because perhaps maybe there's a limiting belief that says, I can't really like money. But in the same way, we often think the same about love. Because we fear the outcome. I don't want to get hurt again. So I build all these walls around myself. I'm not comfortable with being vulnerable. Because then I'm going to be dependent on someone. I'm not comfortable with asking for help. Because then I'm not going to be strong and courageous. Can you see? The outcomes are the same. Because love is not going to dwell where it's not welcome. And if we don't experience it within ourselves, we cannot give it away. Then you're going to run into overdraft. And sometimes perhaps maybe we love others and we give because it becomes our crux for happiness. 
So if I give to others and and they look happy and I give and I give and I give, my happiness later on depends on the reaction of others. Whereas if I work on the flow of love in my life, my happiness will start working from within because the balance, yes, Cynthia, you're right, the balance within my heart is right. And I know that we battle to receive and we battle to ask for help. But just remember, if your finances are not sound, then you won't be able to buy things. You won't be able to support your loved ones. You won't be able to give money out because your finances are not sound. In the same way, the love balance sheet, if we don't fill up our love banks, we will forever fear love and, and we will think of love as hard work and complicated. And then I can't even begin to think, how do I bring love into my work? And how does love heal a situation? Because I haven't experienced the beautiful flow of unconditional love in my life. And it, it starts with me. It all starts with me. So that is the income. Now let's look at the expenses. Now the expenses um, is an area which I am sure you all very familiar with, isn't it? Because the expenses is what we give out. So expenses in the love balance sheet are all the things you give to others. And remember, it's not only gifts or money or support or help. But it's also the thought. What are you thinking when you think about others? Remember, the thoughts that you send out is the thoughts that you extend, that you give. They give energy out. Yes? So expenses are things like the thoughts, the time, the attention you give out. Perhaps maybe you make a lot of time for others and you... Um, spend time with them and you make time. So what is it of yourself that you give in terms of thoughts, time and money? Because the income is that which I extend from my heart to myself. So the expenses is that which I extend from my heart to others. And that gives energy and the other one receives energy. So it's time you spend helping others. It's spending time with your kids. It's also the time you spend on your work, on your career. It's acts of giving is the time that you give out. So just some comments here. How, how in balance is your receiving? How in balance is your income and your expenses tonight? If you just give it a quick thought. How much time do you spend with yourself on doing what you love versus spending time with others, with responsibilities? Yes. How much time and attention do you give others? How much time and attention do you give yourself? Yes. Can you remember that feeling when you were in love for the first time? How amazing that was? And the world looked beautiful, but you made so much time for one another. And you had these conversations until the early morning, yes? So when you are in love with yourself, you fill up your love bank pretty much with bonus points, yes? <laughs> because you'll make time, you'll make time to understand yourself, you'll make time to be patient with yourself and not be so hard on yourself. And you will, you will set up surprises for yourself and buy gifts and, and, and you'll be okay with your failures because you'll understand. Because in the beginning, if you're in love with someone, you're very patient with them, isn't it? You're very patient. So in order to get the balance of giving and receiving right, you have to be the same for you. And you have to be the same for you first. Because ultimately, unconditional love is extending it to others. 
that's our ultimate purpose it's it's being love here on earth it's injecting love in whatever we do it's injecting if if i do what i love i'm just going to give out love if i spend time with the people i love i'm just going to give out love if i encounter hardships or difficult situations i'm just going to deal with it with love so my outcomes are going to be very different if you have questions put them in the comments box um and also give us a lot of hearts while you're listening if you tuned in let those hearts fly over the screen as a symbol of our intention to work with love in our lives if you apply some of the principles of the love balance sheet in your life you will start seeing how love changes outcomes how you change how love changes your heart how love changes your relationships thank you look at all the hearts thank you how love just fill up your life and you know how amazing is it to be in love with life have you ever had that feeling when last when last were you in love with life it's such an amazing feeling and when you're in love with life you just extend that energy you out and you attract people to you and people will come and they will ask you what do you differently how can i do that how do you cope with this and then you have an opportunity to extend what you've experienced and then you light another candle and then one candle lights another one and lights another one and then love makes the world go round How amazing is that? Give us your thoughts, give us your questions and just and also your comments. You know, if you've got any comments, just add them and give us your hearts. Thank you for tuning in. A very important part of our finances is cash flow, isn't it? <laughs> Who of you have ever had the experience that you sort out your income and you sort out your expenses, and then halfway through the middle of the month, then you don't have cash flow? Oh yes, <laughs> has that happened to you? So, in the love world, in in the love is a currency world, what is cash flow? What what can we equate cash flow for? We know that the more we give, the more we receive. is that not so so cash flow is that what makes a currency work for us in our lives when we have cash flow we know that the currency is working because there is sufficient giving there's a flow yes every month <laughs> start loving it cynthia start loving it so when we feel that we have money to spend they now cash flow is sound and we feel good about us, ourselves isn't that so so in the same way acts of kindness and volunteering and allowing yourself to receive are all vibrations that make currency flow gratitude you know gratitude is such an amazing flow in our lives because You know there can be nothing one moment that you feel you can be grateful for nothing nothing and then the minute you start looking around you and you look at the abundance of the universe and you look at the small things that you are surrounded with that gratitude then it just flows and you start feeling better and then the more gratitude you see the more blessings you see the more blessings come so your receiving channel opens Have you ever feel felt how it feels like when you feel low or you feel down and you help someone else or you volunteer or you do a kind deed it makes you feel good and all of a sudden once you've done that act of kindness once you have extended that love and extended that time and extended that compassion you go Oh, I feel better now. Or my situation is not that bad. Or sure, maybe the world is not such a bad place. So then what happens is you start experiencing the flow of giving and receiving. 
And it's got nothing to do with actual money or cash flow, but it's got to do with the kindness and allowing myself to receive and allowing myself to give and allowing myself to say, thank you, bring me more. And if I say, thank you, bring me more, I'm allowing myself to receive. Because if we don't allow ourselves to receive, if we still feel guilty about receiving, then there cannot be flow. Because if we feel guilty about receiving, we actually block the flow, whatever flow it is. If you feel guilty about receiving money, you're not going to receive money. If you feel guilty about receiving love, you're not going to receive love. So open yourself up to just receive fully and say, you know, I'm going to be in the flow this month and this flow is going to be all about volunteering. It's going to be about acts of kindness. It's going to be about saying thank you when someone offers their help. It's going to be be able to ask for help and then say thank you for receiving it. It's going to be about gratitude, donations, um, you know, also exchanging, you know, sometimes exchanging service services, you know, or bartering is a very good way to balance the energy of receiving, paying forward, free cycling, yes, volunteering at animal shelters or old age homes or soup kitchens. And here's a big one. How about saying thank you when you receive a compliment? Yes. Because when you receive a compliment and you say thank you, it means I receive it. Thank you. So the more we give, the more we receive. The more we receive, the more we can give. And that is how we can equate cash flow in terms of working with, with love as a currency in our lives. Because it does really open up the gates of compassion in our lives. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. Let us have your comments. Let us have the hearts going. We spoke a little bit about overdraft um, earlier on as an example. So the overdraft is the balance between giving and receiving. We feel in overdraft where the one or the other weighs more. So when I have received more than what I have given, yes, then I don't feel good about that. I feel out of balance. When I give more than what I've received, then I also feel out of balance. And we know how we feel like when our finances are in overdraft. We feel out of balance and it worries us and we don't know how we can actually pay that overdraft off, yes? You know, there is also sometimes we can make someone feel indebted to us or we can feel indebted to others. So when there isn't a balance of giving and receiving, when there is these unspoken words of... Um, I have received so much, so now I feel indebted to that person. So I start feeling indebted and I feel guilty. If you give too much to someone, they may feel indebted to you. Or you may hold them indebted to you by the fact that I'll give and I'll give and I'll give and somehow, somewhere, I maybe feel in control of the situation so that person is indebted to me. And sometimes when we receive too much, we start feeling bad and we don't know how to pay it back because this person is doing so much for me. Can you see that we're holding each other indebted to each other? So when that happens, that is not unconditional love. 
Because when it's unconditional love, we don't even have those thoughts because the flow of giving and receiving is just happening in balance. So when we feel that feeling of indebtedness or when we feel that the scale is out of balance, it's time to speak up. It's time for us to speak up and it's time to allow ourselves that which we deserve. It's time to return to balance. Return to balance. Cynthia, respect, love and gratitude for your time and guidance. Thank you so much, Cynthia. It is the basics, isn't it? And isn't it that sometimes we overcomplicate things and we overcomplicate our lives and we only do it because of fear. We only do it because we fear being wrong, we fear being vulnerable, we fear the unknown, we feel scary when we don't know the outcome. And so we make the simple energies that's supposed to make our life experience magical on the earth. We kind of like make it too complicated, so we kind of like sidestep around it. Thank you for that comment, Cynthia. Hi, Sharon. Thank you for joining in. Just a reminder, if you are only tuning in now or you've missed the video, it will be uploaded to my YouTube channel and I will post the thread, uh, the, the link on this thread in the live event. Thank you so much. So if we look at um, overdraft and the feelings associated with overdraft, it's going, to, it's going to slow down the flow in our lives. So let's look at examples when you might feel energetically in overdraft. Those are areas where you are compromising yourself, where you are being scared to speak up or scared to ask for what you want. Because if you're scared to speak up and you don't ask for what you want, you're going to have to be satisfied with less than the best or compromise on that which you really wanted. It's also that feeling that you feel so exhausted, you know, that you, you love and you give to the point of exhaustion and you start asking yourself, is this what unconditional love looks like? I remember there was a time in my life where I asked that question to the universe and I asked, is this what unconditional love looks like? Is, is unconditional love meant to be that I disregard myself and my needs? Is unconditional love supposed to be where I must feel this exhausted and this confused, you know? And must I just excuse the shortcomings or the weaknesses because it's unconditional? That's not unconditional love. It was really just a journey um, where I had to see how I was actually disrespecting myself and not honoring myself. I was way in overdraft. So that is overdraft. It is also when you feel like this, maybe also time um, to, to look at taking time out, stand up for yourself, and also, if you have been on the receiving end, if you've been blessed by friends, if you have received blessings in the past month and you go, wow, how good can it get, you know? All these blessings and all these miracles. I'm such a lucky girl. I always say I'm such a spoiled child of the universe, yes? So when you recognize this, do you in turn make the effort do you make the effort to give of your time? Do you make the effort to call a friend? Do you then make the effort to give of yourself? But you see, you can only do that if your love bank is overflowing. Because if you're going to try and do that when your love bank is empty, you're going to pretty much get into overdraft and you're going to feel exhausted. And then you're going to get to a point where you're going to ask those questions. When is it my turn? When is it my turn? But ask yourself this evening, when am I giving me my turn? Yes? 
Give us your comments, give us your questions, give us your hearts on the screen. It's always nice to see them because it's love filled, isn't it? What are your thoughts so far on the love balance sheet? What are your thoughts so far on giving and receiving love? Let us know in the comments. So let's quickly look at the return on investment part. Have you heard of return on investment? So return on investment is, is where you will look at if I invest this amount of money, what will the return be? What will the value be? So what is the first question that you ask yourself when you see a very expensive trip? Of where you see a very expensive course or a retreat. The first thought you have with yourself is, I can't afford this. This is so expensive. I so badly need to do this, but I can't afford it. So you have to sometimes look, when you look at the return on investment, you have to ask, how much do I invest in myself? What do I do for myself that will render a return on investment? You know you are most definitely worth it. And if you really, really, really want to do that expensive course or retreat or you're so drawn to that holiday in Bali, it feels like your soul is calling. If you cannot afford it at the time, then see the journey of saving for it as a return on investment. So what happens where you put your focus and where you put your attention, that is what grows. So if I see saving for something for myself and every month that I save, I go, here's my return on investment Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can see it growing. And every month you look at that return on investment and you see it growing. What will happen? That's where your focus is. It's going to grow. You're going to be blessed. And before you know it, you'll be on the airplane to Bali. How cool is that? Yes? Remember, where your attention is, there it will grow. But what also happened is that you loved yourself enough to do that. And we know that the more we love, we get what we love. It's the same as with that, those beautiful pair of shoes that you saw in the shop. And you didn't buy them because you thought they were too expensive. But for the next week, you kept on thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it until you went and bought it. Why? Because the only thing that you said the whole time is, oh, I so love it. I so love it. I will so love to have that. And eventually the love led you to go and buy it. So you are most definitely worth it. So examples of return on investment is like take a weekend break or do that course that you've always wanted to. Go on the retreat. Invest in your future self, especially when your soul calls to do it, yes? That's true. Um, Susan, I think I'm struggling with it. Well, I think we all are, you know? We all are because we may be in a conditioning where we thought it was selfish, you know? Because you mustn't be heard, you mustn't be seen, or whatever that was. Um, or we think that we were arrogant or selfish or greedy. And that's the only reason why we struggle with it. But you know, Susan, when you start with the small things, when you just maybe, if you have a journal, draw up a love balance sheet and start with something small. Start with a monthly love appointment or a monthly joy appointment, you know, start doing the things that you love. Ask yourself, what will fill up my love bank? And when you've done that one thing or you've done those two things, then you say, okay, can I now go volunteer? Can I go and help at a soup kitchen? Because as I receive, I give. As I give, I receive. 
So what happens is the flow of the currency starts sorting itself out. And it's true. Yes, Sharon, we spoke a lot about gratitude. Gratitude is just, it speeds up. It puts manifestation in the fifth, sixth, seventh gear. But not only that, it opens up your receiving channel. Yes, it opens up your receiving channel. So as a starting point, why don't you draw up your own love balance sheet? And just quietly after meditation or in introspection, you just say, what is my income at the moment? What acts of self-love, what thoughts can I bring into my life about myself? Remember, it doesn't always have to relate to things that you do for yourself, yes, or time initially. But how are you thinking about yourself? What is your thoughts of self-love, yes? And what are you doing little things to start enjoying life again? And then look at your expenses and look at the cash flow. Yes, as we explained earlier. And just start, even if you list one thing for now, you start with small intentions and actions that you can bring love into your life, that you can start working with love as a, as, a, as a flow, as a currency that's flowing in and out. Because if you start doing that and you see the huge impact it has in your life, you will start to feel a little bit more comfortable with it. You know, when you do, um, when you do your finances or your books, you know, we work a lot on that and you spend a lot of time in that and you, you have to give yourself permission to, to allow to see it for what it is and to allow initiatives for income and to allow for sufficient funds to pay a vision board. You can also build it as a vision board or a collage of pictures that you can look at daily to remind yourself to love yourself, to love life. And I promise you, the more you fill up your love bank, the more it will extend to others. So I hope that you have gained some wisdom and some practical guidelines to start working with love. We have to find a way to make the energies of unconditional love and abundance simple and easy to understand because they were never meant to be complicated. The spiritual laws of abundance and unconditional love is meant to make our experience on earth absolutely amazing and magical and to have those experiences or those so-called lessons pass quickly so that we can gain wisdom and divine understanding and divine intelligence so that we can move quicker into ascension and really have a joyful time on earth. So I trust for the first time, I understand that when you have enough in your bank, you can give. That's very true, Sharon. The only reason why we never felt like that is because perhaps we never took the time to fill up our own love banks. You know, you have to get an income first before you can pay your expenses. And on that note, just quickly, how do you feel when you pay your expenses? Do you pay your expenses in gratitude or do you pay them with resentment? So, for example, when you pay your rent or your bond, do you go, oh, this bond, this rent, or do you go, thank you, <laughs> thank you, money, for showing up that I can pay this rent? And thank you that there's a roof over my head and I pay this money out with love because I'm so thankful. In the same way, when you give out love to others, whether it's in a relationship or your friends or your family, you say, thank you that I have this partner. Thank you that I have this dear friend and I love them with gratitude. Thank you. 
that's very, very important if we want to start the flow of giving and receiving in our lives. I have to love, love, love what I give out. So the only reason why we sometimes don't love, love, love what we give out is because our own love banks is empty. And if we restore that balance, if we fill up our love banks, then it's going to be so different to give out. And that is then when you've got it. That is then when we say love heals a situation. Love is the biggest healer of all. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. The video, the repeat of this video will also be posted on my YouTube channel. And you are welcome to email me with questions or put your comments in later. And if the video is done, we'll get back to them throughout the course of the day tomorrow um, with your comments and with your questions. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I trust that you will just have the most amazing weekend. Have a love-filled weekend. And try the love balance sheet this weekend. Yes, try and fill up your love bank. Try and pay it forward. Get the balance sorted. And just do what your heart loves the most. Thank you, everybody. It was lovely that you joined in. And we'll see you again on Tuesday evening, as Tuesday evening is time for our live Q&A with the angels. Lots of love. Thank you. Bye.